Hello and welcome back to Subatomic Particles with your friendly 8th grade AISD science teacher. Today we're taking these atomic models and connecting them to the periodic table. Let's do a quick recap of our previous learning. Here's our vocabulary. Proton, neutron, electron. Check it out. An atomic model encompassing these terms. Remember the proton and the neutron are in the center and the electron are actively moving around on the outside. We also learned about the nucleus and electron cloud, where these guys are located. You can see right here the nucleus is a very small but massive area in the center of the atom, and the electron cloud takes up most of the volume of the atom. We should now have an understanding of these terms in regards to their location within the atom, the charges that they have, their mass, and their activity. We have some new goals that we're going to use today as we move forward. Our job today is to connect the learning of our subatomic models to the periodic table, to be able to identify elements on the periodic table using an atomic model, and to increase our atomic vocabulary. Taking these goals, we're about to look at four different models of the exact same atom. See if you can figure out what these models have in common and what might be the determining factor in making them the same atom. While there may be several things you noticed, check this out. All four of the atoms have the exact same amount of protons. What? That's crazy. Here are the facts. All atoms with the same number of protons are in fact the same atom. So since these models have the same number of protons, nine, they are all representative of the same atom. But how then do we determine which atom this actually is. Did you say with the amazing periodic table of elements? Nailed it! This table is your guide and your key to all things atom. From this point on, when in doubt, turn to the table. All right, for practice, use this excerpt from the periodic table and the atomic model to your right. Can you figure out which atom this model represents? Think about what we've just done and take a chance. Boom. Did you go to your protons? There are nine. Where do we see nine protons on the periodic table? Boom. Found it. This wonderful student, this wonderful student is an atom of fluorine. We call this number at the top of the element. Right here it's a nine. The atomic number. What, 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 what? Say it with me atomic number. Wait, did you notice that the atomic number is always equal to the amount of protons in the nucleus? <sighs> that sure makes it easier for us. Atomic number equals number of protons. Done and done. The atomic number isn't the only thing we can find inside the nucleus and on the periodic table. The next thing that we're going to see is the atomic mass. Get it? It's the mass in the atom. We get this number by adding up all of the masses, massive subatomic particles, which we remember are the protons and the neutrons. We add these guys up and let's see what we get. We have 9 plus 10, which is going to give us 19. Let's check and see if this matches with our element box of fluorine. Do we see a 19 anywhere over here? Well, 18.998 is an average and we're going to round this up to the whole number of 19. So up top, we always find our atomic number, which is the number of protons, and down low, we always find the atomic mass. Let's practice together before you venture out on your own. Before we even think about figuring out what the name of the element is, we have to figure out the atomic number. This can be done in two ways. First, we're just going to count the protons. We have one, two, three. So we already know the answer to this. It's three. We're going to look at the periodic table and we're going to find that three atomic number. Boom. There it is. So we know our atomic number is three and we can now see more clearly that we're dealing with an atom of lithium. For atomic mass, we've also got two options. The first, and the only, if we don't have the table, is to add up our massive subatomic particles, 
which is everything inside the nucleus. Let's see what we get. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we know our atomic mass is seven. Let's look at the table and see what we have. 6.941, that average, is definitely gonna round up to seven for us. Now you try. We have a different atomic model and a different excerpt from the periodic table. Take a couple seconds to see if you can get the atomic number. Did you get five? That's amazing. Let's go through the process. First, check the model and count the protons. One, two, three, four, five blue, massive, positively charged subatomic particles. They are massive and they are positive, they're not blue. Then we're gonna go to the periodic table and we're gonna find our five, we'll circle it. There we go. So now we know clearly that we're dealing with an element of boron. The atomic mass might take a second. See if you can go through the math and figure it out. Remember, we're only focusing on the nucleus for atomic mass. Did you get 11? What, 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 what? Let's look at the process so we make sure we know how to do this regardless of what we're looking at. Start with the model. Everything in the middle is what we're working on because that's where the mass is. When I add these guys up and I come over here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Boom. Eleven. Let's check the table in the element box of boron and see what we have. 10.811 absolutely rounds to 11. Great job. High five. We're going to extend our learning now with a more rigorous example. I believe in you. You got this. If you don't feel confident in it yet, just go back and look at previous parts of the video, but don't be intimidated by something new. All right, check yourself. Use the section of the periodic table below to identify the atomic model to the right that best represents an atom of beryllium. Since we know that atom, find the atomic number first. Boom, it's four. Now you can do this. Da -na -na -na, da -na -na -na. Boom, did you get C? Let's go through and look at how we should have come to this. If you did, that's so amazing. But let's make sure regardless that we understand the process. Since we have this four atomic model, we know that the number of protons in the nucleus should be four. So we have one, two for A, can't be that. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nope, can't be B. C is one, two, three, four, so that looks really good. That's what we think, but let's check D. One, two, three, four, five. Nope, can't be that one. Even though four and five are only one proton off, they're absolutely different atoms as a result of that. If you wanna go back and rewatch parts of the video until you feel confident answering this question, that would be a great way for you to go about your learning. If you did this right this time, amazing job. Have a great rest of your day and go be awesome in science class. Miss Walker here, checking out. See ya.